good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this breakout session. As I look at uh, the participant in this breakout room, I'm not too sure whether I'm repeating my very much myself again uh, because there's a lot of familiar faces that I know of. Uh, yeah, so bear with me if you are going to hear something that you have heard many times uh, because uh, the research project that I'm sharing actually has been on for a number of years. So uh, I have shared in other platform. All right. Uh, basically, what I'm going to share about is inquiry-based learning in a Singapore mathematics classroom. And the main idea is applicable to both primary and secondary mathematics. Uh, the two research projects that this um, session is based on are the Constructivist Learning Design or CLD for Singapore Secondary Maths, as well as the other one, which is the effect of problem solving first versus explicit instruction first on mathematics learning, which is for uh, primary maths, all right? And both of these are actually funded by the Ministry of Education. Um, basically, this is how I'm going to proceed. First of all, I will describe what inquiry-based learning is and how we sought to fulfill this uh, for the mathematics classroom through the efforts of AST, CPDD, as well as NIE partnership. Uh, then the second part, I will talk a little bit more about the constructivist learning design as a potential learning design uh, being leveraged by mathematics teacher in fulfilling IBL in the mathematics classroom. And finally, I will end uh, by taking stock of the lessons learned from uh, CLD. Um, I actually have already prepared a set of uh, slides for the participants that I have emailed to the organizer, but uh, just like me. I always change my slides. So I did change a little. So uh, because of that, towards the end, I'll give you a link, all right? If you follow me right to the end, uh, where you can download the key slides, okay? Right, first of all, fulfilling IBL in Singapore mathematics classroom, okay? Uh, I'm gonna look more on inquiry-based learning, a key area of practice for Singapore teachers, more broadly, more broadly speaking. Now, the emergence of inquiry-based learning, as I think you may have heard about from Mark during the keynote that has its origins to John Dewey, it's a very old thing, it's not new, who sees inquiry as the basis of both discovering and learning. All right? Learning is seen as an adaptive process in which experience is the driver for creating connections between sensations and ideas through a controlled and reflective process. Now, in our Singapore context, I think uh, many of you are already, being, uh, are already aware that inquiry-based learning in Singapore is identified as an area of practice in the skills future for educators, uh, a professional development uh, roadmap that is developed jointly by MOE and NIE. Uh, this aim is basically to nurture students' voice in learning, as you can see from Danny's uh, presentation, how lacking sometimes is in terms of students' voice in the classroom, while asking meaningful questions, again, about asking that kind of question, the whole culture of asking questions and using evidence to address complex problems. Implications for teaching, uh, in terms of for teachers, we need to develop a deeper understanding of these inquiry-based approaches in our discipline and understand how IBL can be used in the classroom. And, and I think that, that's the reason why today's uh, webinar has been mooted because uh, this is exactly what we wanted to do, a broad picture of what IBL is, and yet we are being rooted to the respective disciplines so that we know what to do. So this is where in the next slide, okay, you will see that I am looking at more inquiry-based learning from the perspective of mathematics education. Now, IBL, I think as most of you probably have, have realized, is more associated with science education and its relevance to math education is there, but in their conceptualization of inquiry-based mathematics education, all right, problem-solving tradition is often connected to inquiry. All right, problem-solving is often connected to inquiry. That's why sometimes, in if you look at the literature in in maths education, you don't see so much of inquiry-based learning, but instead, there's a whole lot on problem-solving. Now, IBL is also identified as a possible pedagogical approach to support our mathematics instruction in the Singapore Maths classroom. Uh, if you refer to our uh, 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 syllabus document, IBL is seen as a possible strategy to fulfill the engagement phase of effective planning and delivery of learning, all right? Where students engage with new materials to be learned and their prior knowledge, prior knowledge, all right? Which was also emphasized by both Mark as well as Dennis, uh, beliefs and skills are to be considered in their learning. Now, in terms of fulfilling IBL in the Singapore Maths classroom, okay, uh, 
if you look at the pedagogical approaches that embody constructivist principles, they are better aligned for this purpose, as it was mentioned also very explicitly by uh, uh, Dennis in his presentation that this is basically a kind of constructivist approach. All right. It requires the teachers though, to shift the practice that make constructive use of students' prior knowledge structure, probing, probing questions to challenge students, encourage discussion of alternative viewpoints, as well as allow students to make connection between their ideas and the mathematical concepts. And this is where I think we do face some challenges. Current didactical transmissionist instructional approaches, as was presented by Dennis recently, just before this, may not be adequate to support the curriculum focus of exposition of mathematical concepts are largely structured by the teacher. Right? Currently, the thing is that the way we our instruction approaches okay, is such that the exposition of conceptual knowledge, the mathematical concepts, is not discovered by the student, but largely structured, created by the teacher and given to the student. And less attention is paid on students uh, current mathematical knowledge structures. In fact, we do write in our lesson plan about pre-conceived knowledge or, or no uh, prerequisite knowledge, but I think they're very seldom in our normal transmissionist instruction approaches. Do we uh, actually find out what is that state and how do we use that to support our instruction? So designing pedagogy that is actually sustainable in Singapore classroom is also a big issue that was raised by Dennis. While we know this is important, but how do we know that whenever we come up with something, it is something that teachers will accept because it's about teachers believe, about the belief not only in such an approach, about their students learning as well as in such an approach in achieving some kind of the learning outcomes that we articulated in the curriculum. So the whole idea is how do we get um, approach a pedagogical approach right that's also sustainable okay now this is where the thing is to support uh, teachers in their idea effort you find that um, curriculum specialists from CPDD master teachers from Academy of Singapore teachers AST have actually partnered with uh, NIE uh, in the development of validation and adoption of suitable learning designs particularly those that are constructivist in orientation, right? As I mentioned before, if you are looking at this kind of 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 of, of uh, um, uh, learning outcomes, where it is more than the students sitting there passively uh, um, uh, uh, absorbing, but actually uh, trying to create that knowledge, create knowledge that's needed in a world that we don't even know about, then the thing is, a constructivist approach will be much more relevant. Now, the aim is to produce not only such an approach but also an effective and sustainable design for the Singapore mathematics classroom. So it, we, we don't just go out and come up with design, but we work closely with the CPDD in terms of what the curriculum say, in terms of what, what exactly uh, is a practice line in the school from AST. While we put in the research to uh, research about the design as well as the uh, validating some of these uh, uh, packages that we come up with. And one such design that uh, we actually have co-developed is actually the constructivist learning design, uh, which has the potential of being leveraged by mathematics teacher in fulfilling uh, IBL. Okay. Now the CLD or the constructivist learning design leverages constructive uh, perspectives of learning that are actually postulated by people like Piaget and Vygotsky, which propose that knowledge is a product of one's cognitive acts and is actively constructed by the learner. In contrast to the other two predominant behaviorist and cognitivist positions, the constructivist position neither subscribes to the my independent nature of knowledge, nor believe that knowledge could be just mapped, imposed, or transfer intact from the mind of one knower to another. Okay, knowing is actually an adaptive process, as was actually uh, 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 spoken and shared by um, uh, Mark earlier. And knowledge that's constructed must be viable for or make sense to the learner under the particular circumstances or context in which learning takes place. Okay, now drawing from the propositions um, made by uh, both uh, uh, scholars on cognitive constructivists as well as um, the, uh, uh, those who are in the social constructivist position, um, this knowledge construction process where, uh, emerges is dependent on how students construct knowledge based on their existing connective structures 
and the social factor that affect the ways in which learning communities from form shared understanding and on the role of social interaction in the course construction of knowledge. In other words, the thing is that in our constructivist learning design, right, we were looking at both the cognitivistic uh, constructivism as well as social constructivism, whereby we are interested in what is the schema, current schema of the child, as well as how does the social context play a part in the knowledge building, all right? And this is quite different from behaviorism or cognitivism. Now, in line with the constructivist metaphor to, to learning, there's a need for teachers to understand how students are constructing knowledge during the learning of a new concept, okay? These constructions provide windows into the type of knowledge to be unlearned and relearned, not just un un relearned, no, unlearned, no? Yeah, but also relearn because they might have their own preconceived ideas. Okay, uh, but also the teacher to build upon the instruction for the learning of the new concept. As such, it is important for teachers to leverage on students' current knowledge as resources in their knowledge construction process and conceptual growth, and build upon the current conceptions into their instructions of targeted mathematics knowledge. Now, several learning designs such as the Japanese uh, open-ended approach. Uh, the Singapore Protective Failure by uh, Professor Manu Kapu, as well as the post-TL's approach have suggested that the use of students' construction in instruction uh, and show that these are effective impacting student learning. Uh, in fact, our proposed designs right, draws from the proposition made by the various scholars, as uh, I mentioned before, uh, both in the cognitive uh, constructivist camp as well as the social constructivist camp. And these are the three propositions. Understanding is brought about through an interaction between learners' prior conceptions and the context of learning, all right? Learning is dominated by cognitive conflict or disequilibrium as postulated by Piaget, which determines the organization and nature of what is to be learned. And evaluating the viability of the individual understanding and social negotiation are important in the evolution of knowledge. In other words, the individual as well as the social context are very important in the process of knowledge construction. Now, this is where I will briefly share with you the design. All right. I'm going to say a, a bit, quite a bit of it. So a bit of a reading so that I don't miss out on some of the key uh, contexts here. Given that Singapore has a national school mathematics curriculum, a viable approach actually that could fulfill these principles need to be aligned to the updated secondary math syllabus and does not disrupt the structure of the math instruction where problem solving is the focal activity under the context of the Singapore School Mathematics Curriculum. Now, this is important, as I mentioned before, uh, it's something that must be sustainable. So it must be aligned with the national curriculum. Now, drawing from the specification for constructivist learning design that is based on problem solving first approach to build our students' prior knowledge structures to effect more connected understanding of mathematical concept, the CLD comprises of two phases, as you can see on the left and right. A collaborative problem solving phase, targeting a concept that the students have yet to learn, all right? And two, an instructional phase, all right, on the right, where the teacher builds upon the solution, creating linkages between the solutions to the targeted concept. To reinforce the connection and linkages that were built during the instructional phase, students will also work on um, practice questions that are calibrated to the ideas and critical features that were discussed during the instruction. So we don't just stop there in the instruction, we also provide further practice, okay? Now, the other thing is to look at some of the, how the inquiry part actually plays out, all right, in these two phases. For the problem solving phase, the problem that is designed is the anchor of the activation of prior knowledge structures of students, Via the parameters set defined by the problem in the targeted concepts, students will work collaboratively to solve a complex problem that targets a concept that is not formally taught. All right, so we are introducing a concept through such a problem. As students are unable to discover solutions on their own naturally, normally, such a process helps students kickstart the student's inquiry process. In that it allows for experimentation, exploration, evaluation, and con conjecturing multiple solutions. The collective sharing of different attempts allows students to discover alternative approaches as well as solutions and to clarify their own ideas. The teacher's role in this phase is to ensure conceptual conflict and disequilibrium and get students to persevere. Point of constraints and 
limitations of student strategies. In other words, and this stage, all right, basically the students are exploring and experimenting. The teacher is supposed to put in place the effective part of it to support that whole process. All right. In the instruction phase, which follow the problem solving phase, typically takes about a period of 45 minutes of classroom instruction. The teacher will now take the uh, representation and solution methods uh, that are produced by the students. So this follows after problem solving. So there are solutions and representation methods provided by the students that the teacher will build upon to teach the targeted concept or, or strategy. The aim of the instruction phase is the resolution of cognitive conflict and gaps that were activated right, or induced during the problem solving phase and affect the whole process of what Gadget called assimilation and accommodation. All right, in the understanding of why the targeted concept and strategy are the most acceptable ones given the problem. In line with the research from Productive Failure, teachers' uh, discussion of the different uh, attempts and solutions allows students to discuss alternative approach and solutions and allowing them to see the affordances and constraints in their solution. In other words, the teacher do not just tell. The teacher actually uses the student's solution to talk about their affordances as well as constraint and to guide the students in the comparison and contrast of the various solution methods so as to work towards all right in a guided form the canonical concept evident from the process in cld students will be engaged in inquiry as you have seen uh, in my just earlier description however how does this pan out in actual practice so this is where uh, we show you here all right a task all right we have implemented units designed by CLD in Singapore classroom since 2018. But one of the concepts that we designed using CLD, uh, which is shown here, is a concept of gradient of linear drafts. This concept introduced at SEC1 level of the Singapore uh, secondary level curriculum, and usually it's formulated as change in magnitude interaction of variable one over change in magnitude interaction of variable two, or vertical change over horizontal change, or sometimes in a very very, very uh, uh, um, um, layman form rise of the run. A conceptual analysis of the concept was first carried out and we revealed four critical features. Uh, involved the quantification of steepness, the quantification of direction, the consideration of two dimensions variables, as well as a consideration of the ratio of the two variables. With these critical features, right, variation of the above features are crafted with plausible context culminating the problem that we see here in the slide above. All right, so all this length that you are seeing here, right, are specially chosen given what we are trying to gather from students. So the task design is very important. Okay. Because of the constraint, I will not go very much into the task design, but instead I thought just to show you uh, the solution uh, and representation provided by the students in the implementation. To set one students of various uh, profile, uh, we found that five categories of responses surface, and these are documented here. The solutions that are featured in this and the next slides are, first of all, uh, in this slide, we have type one, right? Type one are those that consider only one variable or dimension when addressing either steepness or direction, all right? Now, type two are those that consider a combination of two dimensions of variables when addressing both steepness and direction of the trail section, while type three, as you can see there, are those that consider the ratio of two dimensions or variables when addressing the steepness and direction of the trail section. Let me now show you type four and five. Type four includes the consideration of angles where addressing the, of the steepness and direction of the trail sections, while type five includes the canonical concepts where both steepness and direction of trail sections are taken into consideration. So you can see that we actually have tried uh, this uh, particular task and we look at some of the solutions and we actually provide teachers to implement with the sample first to think about how they can plan the lesson. But of course, they can use their actual student solution to plan the actual lesson. But generally speaking, our, our experience shows that these are generally the five classes that we can find in student solution. And this is where after collecting those solutions, the classification of the solution will take place. And then the teacher during the instructional phase will encourage students to compare the different approaches by directing them 
to their own solution. So the teacher actually use the student's actual solution, all right, and encourage students to compare the different approaches used to solve the problem, allowing them time to distill the critical features. So critical features are actually emphasized as the teacher try to consolidate that whole session, all right, and help students to draw connections between their solution so that they can now eventually construct, not the teacher giving, but construct or develop the targeted concept of grading. To assistant, the CLD is tractable and effectuous, uh, efficacious. The effects of CLD was compared to the transmissionist direct instruction counterpart on the deeper learning of mathematics. As mentioned earlier, students in the DI condition differ from CLD condition in terms of the sequence of problem solving and instruction phases. They will first experience the teacher-led instruction guided by the course book, uh, textbook, and then working on problems after the instruction, like what normally you would do. All right, and to compare two conditions, measures on students' learning records of teacher enactment and perceptions were collected. All right. We actually tested the unit on set one class from a mainstream and results demonstrate that CLD class surpasses that of uh, 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 comparison direct instruction class in terms of their performance on both tests, uh, testing for students' procedural fluency, conceptual understanding and transfer. In fact, the current results uh, seem to suggest that despite being subjected to unfamiliar learning design, the CLD class was also able to perform as well as the DI class, the direct instruction class on the procedural uh, 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 knowledge item. The results further suggest that CLD does have a positive effect, effect on learning as assessed by their better scores on conceptual understanding and ability to transfer. So the thing is they don't lose out in terms of procedural, but what is even better is that they have better scores on conceptual understanding as just on transfer, all right? Right, implications. Now, post-assessment as certaining the efficacy of the CLD in developing deep understanding and transfer revealed that CLD students are not only outperforming uh, their DI counterpart in terms of their assessed conceptual understanding of the targeted concept, but also on items that examine their ability to transfer what they have learned all right, to more novel settings, whether the context were actually similar, which have items that are similar, as well as contexts that require advanced knowledge in unfamiliar contexts. Okay, these findings provide a positive indication that CLD has engendered deep learning processes to afford the cultivation of transferable skills and knowledge that may help students for novel situations in the fourth industrial revolution. All right, positive indication pathway actually for development of more curriculum units that cover the major strengths of the secondary math syllabus. And topics include gradient of curves, we have angle properties of circles, standard deviation, and quadratic inequalities. Uh, more units developed for secondary maths can be found in the ebook if you are interested. I have I actually put a link there, uh, not to worry. This is also in the slide that I gave you. So if you are interested, you can actually uh, click on the link later on using the slide, or you can just take a picture of this first, okay? Uh, the book is free, so you, you can actually download the ebook. Uh, but we will be uh, updating the ebook soon. So uh, please feel free to check back again if you do download uh, this, this couple of weeks. All right. Uh, check back maybe end, end, end of this year. We might have another revised version. All right. Most importantly, uh, the positive results show that CLD can support IBL and can be tractable for deep learning. Okay. We have also uh, developed a unit for primary level uh, because we noted that uh, the primary school teachers are also very interested uh, under the other project. And this is the one that we have designed uh, for the one targeting at the concept of area. You notice that again, it is not just about telling them what is the area, telling them how to calculate area, but rather they actually go through a guided discovery to actually appreciate the whole concept of area and eventually discover the whole formula for calculating the area of a rectangle. So maybe I, since I don't have time to go through in detail and this, there are more words, I will pause for one minute for you to look at the task, just one minute.
Okay, All right. Next, I want to talk about the lessons drawn from CLD. Okay, the CLD was developed by the partnership of NIE, CPD, and ASA as a potential learning design to support IBL efforts in the secondary maths classroom. And we have actually validated the design, which shows that the CLD has potential to support inquiry-based learning. We're not just giving you uh, an idea, a design, but we actually have validated the design with supporting packages. Not only does the CLD contains a necessary processes to support inquiry, as you have seen what I've mentioned here and comparing it with what was being said and shared by Mark, as well as Dennis in the uh, uh, keynote, you realize that the CLD does support the uh, necessary processes to support inquiry. It also engenders that deep learning process that we're trying to actually uh, achieve in our new curriculum, all right? Right? Uh, whereby we wanted students to cultivate a deep understanding of maths concept as mathematical objects, which are transferable skills as well as knowledge in the 21st century. Because in the 21st century, I don't think we can expect that knowledge is just going to stay stagnant. There'll be new mathematics, there'll be new problems. All right, Can our students have a deep understanding of the basic concepts and transfer such skills right, to the new problems that they're going to encounter in the 21st century? With the CLD um, um, showing as a potential to support IBL in the mathematics classroom, it has also been used to inform the framework that AST has developed to guide the process of inquiry in Singapore mathematics classroom. The mathematics framework of IBL in mathematics, which you can see all right, in the diagram, is such a framework and has been developed by AST with inputs from NIE through this project. All right? So you can just see that uh, there's a fair bit of things that's been said earlier on by both Mark and, 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 and Dennis, uh, uh, when they refer to inquiry-based learning, generally speaking, what the processes that are needed, what need to be done during inquiry. And this uh, framework actually is actually captured the gist of what is needed, all right? And so far, as far as I know, uh, I, I have spoken to some of the master teacher, uh, feedback from the maths uh, uh, senior teachers as a lead teachers is that, they are appreciative of this framework to guide their practice in the IBL maths. And I think this is important. The reason why I feel it is important is because, as I mentioned earlier on, um, uh, the literature in maths on in, in inquiry based learning is much thinner than in other disciplines because ours is more on problem solving. But there are many different types of problem solving. And we just want to make sure that we are addressing IBL in a manner that is actually coherent with what the other discipline is doing so that there's some kind of common language like what we're trying to achieve through the Singapore teachers practice, teaching's practice, all right? Now, um, this, this morning, my, my research associate actually sent me this um, 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 article, which I thought was really interesting. It's a recent work to consolidate favorite and effective instructional strategies uh, for maths, okay? And it, it reveals that there are four teacher recommended strategies, which seems to be not only their favorite, but also effective. And these are the four of them. If you're interested, you can click and, and read a little more. I think they, they did mention about it, all right? But the thing is that they, they, they actually try to consolidate by getting researchers and practitioners to talk about what is effective, what is their favorite. And this four actually stood up. Uh, concrete representation, uh, abstract, I think this is very similar to what we talk about uh, in our CPA. Uh, but at the same time, what is important is that if, if you look at uh, what we're trying to do sometimes is to really represent mathematics in context so that students can actually appreciate the abstract part of this important. Encouraging discourse, getting students to discuss like what we're talking about, getting students to do small group work, all right? And getting students not to just be given the knowledge as if it's been manufactured, but rather explore before we explain. As well as this interesting called a whiteboard wall, right? Whereby students actually feel their work, okay? And they could see the whole uh, 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 set of workings from different people to compare, making their, their whole process and learning, their thinking, their work, all visible. Now, if you look at this four, right? You immediately can relate to the CLD that we just mentioned. Uh, you can see that there are four elements that are being enacted out throughout the whole two-phase uh, process. And it's just 
no wonder that it works, all right? Because the thing is that basically we're putting together the, uh, the instruction strategy types that really work in our classroom. It's just that putting it together is not easy. Uh, we have to work as a community. And that's why the thing is that we come up with some tasks to share with teachers, okay? Now, finally, uh, before I end, I thought that uh, I would want to just talk a little bit about insights from the CLD for better practice. Now, first of all, I think inquiry-based learning is viewed as an important pedagogical approach that Singapore mathematics teacher could leverage for better and quality instruction. Curriculum specialists and master teachers have partnered NIE in this development, validation, and adoption of suitable learning designs. We don't just say that, let's do this but we look at it from the perspective of the policy, the curriculum, the practice, the needs of teacher from the master teacher all right, in AST, as well as from research from NIE, okay? So that suitable designs that are effective and sustainable are being made available to the uh, teaching fraternity. The CRD is one such approach, which we hope that you can appreciate because it shows that mathematics instruction should emphasize more on the process of problem solving to afford deep and meaningful learning, not just the answer, but the process of problem solving and the development, uh, development of uh, mathematical habits of mind and disposition in our students. So what is important, like I mentioned earlier on, it's not just the mathematics, but also the disposition of our students in terms of their habits of mind as a well disposition. Okay. Findings from CLD research have shed light on other important mechanisms in productive learning, such as cognitive load in planning better uh, direct instruction lessons. In fact, this is something that we found uh, when we did the primary maths project, when we were trying to compare the uh, normal so-called direct instruction, but now with knowledge from CLD, so as to reduce the cognitive load of teaching even in direct instruction. We actually, because of that, right, we make the direct instruction much more effective. What is interesting is that it makes also our data a little bit more confusing. We are still in the process of analyzing the data, okay? Uh, two IBL uh, in maths in-service courses were also developed based on these two research projects and teachers who are interested may uh, to know more about this. I know this is very rush and I know that I'm speaking like train, Right, it may not make sense to some of you. My apologies, but it's a very short sharing. All right, you may want to sign up these two courses by Tracy. Okay, uh, there's one for primary, one for second. In fact, there's one for JC. But since this is targeted at primary and secondary, I did not mention the course code. Now, taken together, the CLD research illustrate a concerted effort for change from research and practice could slowly help to sustain pedagogical approach that have potential for deep learning. In fact, uh, AST is now helming the uh, network learning uh, community, NLC, okay, for the CLD at the secondary level. So uh, I'm sure that uh, AST will be giving more information that for those who are interested in joining the fraternity in this particular endeavor, all right? Thank you so much for your attention. And if you are interested in the slides, uh, you can download from me. Like I say, I have changed some things, so you might want to use this. Okay. Uh, once you've gotten this, thank you so much. Go to the main room again, and this is where the Q&A will start. Okay. Thank you so much.